There are several types of events in GA4, and in this video, we'll take a look at one particular type, recommended events in Google Analytics 4. Hey, my name is Julius, and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And if you want to stay up to date with Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. At the moment, there are four types of events in Google Analytics 4. Automatically tracked events, enhanced measurement events, recommended events, and custom events. In today's video, we will focus on one particular type, which is recommended events. When you want to start tracking a particular event and send it to GA4, first you should come up with an event name and parameters. Instead of just randomly coming up with something, you should first check whether GA4 is not tracking that event automatically. Then you should take a look at enhanced measurement possibilities. If you could not find your event there either, then take a look at the list of recommended events in GA4. Recommended events allow GA to better understand what kind of data are you sending to it and in which reports to display that particular data. Is it a purchase? Is it a product impression? Or maybe a login? Or something else? In this video, we will take a look at an example where I want to track when a user logs in. And I want to send that event to Google Analytics 4. So let's take a look at the entire process. So if you have some event in mind and you want to track it with Google Analytics 4, Google highly recommends that you use their naming convention because in the future that should unlock some additional reporting. And in general, Google will better understand what kind of events are you sending and what do they represent. In the description of this video, I will post a link to a page where you will find the recommended events. So here are some generic recommended events such as login, purchase, sign up, tutorial begin. And also on the right side of this page, you will find some of the recommended events for certain industries. For example, for retail and e-commerce, for job education, local deals and real estate websites, for travel, and then for games. So for example, if we click on retail e-commerce, you will find some additional events right here, such as add to cart, purchase, refund, Basically, these are related to e-commerce tracking. So for example, if you want to properly implement e-commerce tracking, you should follow this naming convention. So this means that the name of the event should be exactly like this. And if you want to send some additional data like coupon, currency, what kind of items were included in the checkout, then you should use these exact properties named like this. Because for example, if you sent a purchase event with some purchase data, but the name of the event was purchase completed, instead of purchase, then Google Analytics would not be able to understand that this is actually a purchase and that event would not be displayed in e-commerce reports of Google Analytics 4. So this is very important that if you have an event and you want to track it with Google Analytics 4 and that event is mentioned among recommended events, then you should follow Google's naming convention. Let's try to track one of the recommended events with Google Analytics 4. So let's say that I have a login page and I want to track every time when a user logs in to his or her account. So first of all, let's take a look at the list of recommended events and see if I can find anything relevant to login. So I go to the list of all recommended events. If I cannot find it right here, then I will be looking at other sections on the right side. But first, let's look at all properties. And I can see that there is a login event right here. So I could use that in my event tracking. So let's go to Google Tag Manager and implement that login tracking. In Google Tag Manager, I have already created a GA4 configuration tag where I don't have any additional configuration except the measurement ID and I have kept this setting enabled. So this means that when the tag fires, it will automatically send the page view event as well. If you have no idea where did I get this measurement ID right here, you can find it in the admin of your GA4 property. Go to data streams, click on the stream name, and then copy this measurement ID right here. Then choose the GA4 configuration tag type and paste that measurement ID, and then fire this tag on all pages. So this is a prerequisite that I have done before I have started recording this video. Now the time has come to track logins. So first let's check how the login is actually working. First let's enable the preview mode in my Google Tag Magic container. 
this is the container that is installed on this website. Then I will copy the URL and enter that URL in the Tag Assistant pop-up, click Start. And then the login page opens right here. I see that the debugger is connected. Also, I see that it is connected right here. So now let's log in and check how things are working. Then click Login. A new page has opened. This is just a fake page. This is a dummy page, so don't worry that it does not look like a real account. This is just for demonstration purposes. So once I have logged in, then I go to Tag Assistant and then see that there is another page view. This was the first page view. This is the second page view. And then on the second page view, I have a data layer event, which is called Login. This has happened because I have asked a developer to push the login information about the user and about the actual login event to the data layer. So if I expand it, I will see that this was the information that was pushed to the data layer. The event, which is login, and then user ID. And this is the ID of the user that has currently logged in right here. In this video, I will not dive deeper into the user ID tracking because that's a topic for another video. But right now, let's focus just on the login event itself. So since I have the login event in the data layer, the first thing that I need to do is that I need to create a trigger for this custom event right here. So I go to Google Tag Manager, I go to Triggers, then I go to New, Trigger Configuration, and then Enter Custom Event. And then I insert login right here because this is the value of the parameter event in the data layer push right here. Then let's name the trigger. Now, since we have created a trigger, the final piece is to create a tag, the event tag that will send the login event to Google Analytics 4. And we can do that by clicking new tag configuration and GA4 event. Now in this tag, first we need to choose to which exact Google Analytics property do we want to send the data? Since I have already created a Google Analytics 4 configuration tag and that tag contains the property ID, I can just select that configuration tag right here. So this means that this event tag will reuse the settings from that particular configuration tag. Then in the event name field, I should enter the word login. Exactly lowercase without any additional words, symbols, or whatever, just login. That is because in the Google Analytics documentation, I see that the name of the event is just login. But for example, let's say that if I had some additional data about the login, let's say the method of logging in, because maybe some visitors have logged in with email while others have logged in with a Google account or something like that, then I could send an additional parameter, which is called method. And in this field right here, I would insert the variable that returns the login method. Now, how do I know that this parameter is exactly method like this? Because it is mentioned in the documentation. So we have a login event. And if I want, I can additionally send a parameter called method. Now, this parameter is recommended by Google as well. But in my case, I don't have any login methods in the data layer because, well, the login page of my website has only one login method. That's why I will remove this parameter right here. However, if you have some additional parameters that you want to send to Google Analytics 4, you can just enter them like this. For example, let's say that when a user logs in, then you can also send the pricing plan of that user. In that case, you can enter the parameter called pricing plan. In fact, you can enter any parameter name that you want because that is the benefit of Google Analytics 4. The data model is quite flexible. So if you want, you can enter pricing plan, you can enter pricing, you can enter plan or whatever. This is your custom parameter, so you can send it whatever you want. Of course, there are some limitations regarding the length, but in general, you can name it whatever you want. And then if you have some variable in your Google Tag Manager container that returns the value of the pricing plan, for example, a data layer variable, then you could insert that variable right here by clicking this Lego button. But that is once again, just a hypothetical example. And since I don't have any pricing plan data in the data layer, I will just remove this parameter. All in all, I will be sending just the event name and that is all. 
then in the triggering section, you should select the custom event trigger that you have just created in your Google Tag Manager container. If you are not familiar at all with data layer and custom event trigger, I will post some additional resources in the description of this video. Let's name the tag and then save it. Click Save. Now it's time to test. So if you want to start seeing these changes in your preview mode of Google Tag Manager, you should click Preview button once again. Then your preview mode will be reloaded. First of all, you will see that the page view will appear right here. Then let's log in. Click login right here. Go to Tag Assistant. This is the preview mode of Google Tag Manager. You will see the login event right here. And then if you click that login event, you will see that your GA4 tag has fired. Now let's go to Google Analytics. And then in the bottom left corner, click Debug View. And then eventually you will see the login event appear in the stream as well. However, keep in mind that there is some delay and this did not appear for me instantly. If I recall correctly, I even had to refresh the page and refresh the preview mode once again, just to start seeing the event in the preview mode. I mean, in the debug view of Google Analytics 4. So if you click this event, you will see some additional parameters that were sent together with that event to Google Analytics 4. All right, hopefully you now better understand what are recommended events in Google Analytics 4. If you want to learn more about event tracking in general, then take a look at the description of this video, where you can download a free ebook on GA4. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.